Okay, Audrey, do you want to start so we don't keep people keep too people long? Too, um, too long? Yes, with pleasure. So thank you everyone for participating to day two of this uh, first uh, virtual annual meeting. Um, we had a very interesting day. Uh, starting with the first anniversary of the child protection minimum standards um, this morning as a soft opening. Um, and if you have missed it, you can still see the live over our uh, Alliance Facebook page. Um, and then we had the pleasure from Ali Hassan Taka, who is a 16 years old youth activist. and. Ali, Ali reminded us of the importance of children's voice. Uh, and we particularly like his last quote, uh, which was, raise your voice, don't wait for the others to speak. And I will now hand over to Hani to uh, guide us through some of the thematic session of the day. Great, thank you very much. Actually, I'm just gonna first connect one of the sessions that I was in, which was, on adolescence, um, it was actually an entire one and a half hour, which was really interesting, and it really connected back. It kept reminding me of what Ali was was saying and representing, which is this desire um, by adolescents to actually be involved in in not only shaping their own life but also helping and shaping other children and adolescents' uh, life. And it really, if you um, if you look at the kind of the, the uh, development stage that adolescents are in and the needs that they have this idea of um, taking charge and taking control of their own destiny and others others really resonates with that age group um, so i'm very glad that we had such strong representation on this issue of adolescence both by ali and also the uh, colleagues that shared their experiences <coughs> excuse me then, um, as you, hopefully all of you were there uh, and saw, we had a really rich discussion on the issue of evidence. Um, and it started by this really strong focus on, on, the, the, on the element of ethics and, and the, some really provocative discussions and questions were posed. Is it ethical to, to collect data from children during a pandemic like COVID-19 if, that data is not going to be used if that data can can be sourced or found in, through other means than directly collecting it from, from children. And from the other side, the really strong emphasis by practitioners on, on the importance of hearing from children themselves. So it was it's very interesting that these two all often get juxtaposed as if they are they, they can't live in, in, in one world. Um, and it, they, they come in as, as if, if someone says ethics need to be taken into account, that they're saying that children should not participate, or if someone says children should be participate, they are not necessarily thinking about do no harm or ethics. But they, in, in fact, I think that conversations today were pointing to the fact that it's all about striking the right balance between those two. Um, and they can live in the same universe um, as each other. Um, and the conversations continued um, on evidence in some of the some of the uh, sessions, the parallel sessions that we had. Some really interesting data from uh, from Save the Children's work um, and other organizations that have done uh, data collection. Um, and the question remains: When do we do it? How do we do it safely? Um, and and how is it going to? actually be used in informing our programming and these are really good questions that i think we're not going to provide an answer to these are age-old questions um <clears throat> but hopefully every time we're having these conversations we move one step forward other the other elements that kept coming up throughout the sessions that i attended but also uh, throughout the the discussions on evidence um which also came up very strongly yesterday this is this element of um, multi-sectoral approach to responding to the needs of children in an environment like uh, COVID-19 and and it really kind of resonates with that with that socio-ecological socio model that was presented during the first day <clears throat> and the idea that if you want to protect children we can't 
we can't address it solely from child protection sectoral perspective. It needs to be in coordination and ideally with in, in, in integration form with other sectors, which, which connects to the pillar, pillar four of the CPMS um, and the strong emphasis that that pillar has put on an integration of child protection have to go beyond mainstreaming and go into more kind of targeted uh, integration of, of programs. Um, I'll stop there. Over to you, uh, Audrey. You're muted, Audrey. Yes, it works better. Um, and so uh, before everyone leaves, just a couple of things we would like to announce. Uh, first of all, stay until the end because we are going to show you a short video, but tomorrow stay with us because during the soft opening from 1 to 1.30 CET time, European time, you can ask Hannah or you can listen to a podcast or you can do a little bit of yoga before starting another day of meeting. Uh, you will see in the chat box, we have posted the link to the survey. So please take the time to fill it, um, to give us a sense of how your day has been with us and maybe what we need to um, kind of improve and do better. Um, I will quickly hand over to Hani for a last tiny announcement and then we will play the video. So please stay with us, fill the survey. Honey, the floor is yours. Great, yes, and just to reiterate, fill the survey, survey please, it will really help us. Um, the announcement is that right after this, we will have hopefully some of our donors, you actually don't know which ones and who is gonna join, join us um, for a donor practitioner social uh, interaction. Uh, through Kiko Chat, you're going to see networking spaces via spatial chat. Uh, you will go click on that and it will lead you to a, to a room where you can actually move yourself and, and have conversations with different people who are that, in that space. You can all have conversation together or go into groups in that space. So make sure that you go there, find a donor that you would like to talk to um, and enjoy the conversation. Great. Over to you for Hannah. So thank you so much. Have a good end of your day, wherever you are. Good luck for the one who are on the side of the world where we still have the rest of the day to go through. Have a lovely evening for the other one. Stay tuned. This is Hannah coming to you uh, with a short video. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hannah. Do you have questions concerning child protection and COVID-19? You can ask Hannah, the Alliance Virtual Assistant, in three easy steps. First, go to the Alliance website at alliancecpha.org. Then, find the Ask Hannah tab on the bottom right-hand corner of the Alliance website homepage. Then, click the Ask Hannah tab and start asking your questions right away. For example, how can we use helplines during COVID-19? And Hannah will generate you a response as well as any corresponding guidance, including webinars and podcasts. And it's as simple as that. So head over to the Alliance website and ask Hannah your questions today. See you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.